Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We thank the most high of you all for allowing us to come out here today to come together and celebrate and just commune with one another on another set of our Shabbat. And at this time, we are going to get ready to start our service. And we're going to have the blowing of the shofar, seven times by our chief elder, as long as I can, Kabar Yahu. And immediately after that, we're going to have our brother, Aki Slomo, to come and pray for us, pray us in. So at this time, we are going to turn to face the east. And as we look towards Jerusalem, uh, as long as they came to Bar Alpha, it's going to go to Shafar. And then afterward, we're going to have our prayer. Ra'aki Shalomo. Hallelujah. Introduction of us, some things we would need to cover 
in order to get a thorough understanding of what's going on, going on in Isaiah. And then, when we get into it, we'll find out who this suffering servant is. So first, we're going to turn to Isaiah 53, and we're going to read it. And we're going to pay attention to certain words within that chapter, and you can just highlight those words or underline or write them down, because we will come back to those words as we get into the actual series, because this is going to take about probably about four lessons. I know you might believe, I mean, think about how can that take that many lessons, but there's so much you're going to have to understand and know what's going on here. Okay, then we're going to ask our sorry they can, if he would, to start us off Yeshiyahu Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, beginning at the first verse. And we're going to read in the chapter in its entirety. It's only about maybe 13 verses or so, but we're going to read it. Yeshiyahu or Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid it as, our, as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we, has, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of, of Elohim, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and Yahuwah have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and was afflicted and, and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Stop right there. Read that again. He was oppressed. Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. The title of today's lesson is The Lamb. That's very important right there. We need to get an understanding of that right there. Continue reading on. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased your Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of your Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness so my righteous servant shall, um, shall I, servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay, so let's go back up to Isaiah 53, verse 5. It said, he was wounded for our what? 
Transgression. Transgression. Mm -hmm. No or oh, underline. He was bruised for our what? Iniquities. Iniquities. Mm -hmm. Highlight or oh, underline. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are what? Healed. Mm -hmm. It said, All we like sheep have gone astray, <coughs> and what turned everyone from, I mean, to his own way. It is said, and the sovereign has laid, or you who have laid on him the iniquities or iniquity of us all. Underline. And Yahuwah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Make sure you highlight that right there. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Mm. It said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Underline that right there. Matter of fact, go, um, so I can't get Isaiah, not Isaiah, Leviticus 5 and 1 for me. Because everyone knows the condition the nation of Yashraal was in when Hamashiach came on the scene. That nation was, had become a wicked people. And you notice because they were in captivity, had they been living righteous, Rome would not have been ruling over them. You got it on, huh? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Leviticus 5, verse 1. I like this as well. And if a soul sin, if a soul sin, how then, then let's see how this soul sin. And hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness, and is a what? A witness. A witness. Whether he has seen, whether he has seen this act of sin, or known of it, or known of this act of sin, if he do not utter it, if he do not what? Utter it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Then he shall what? Bear his iniquity. Okay, because you're going to often hear that another man can't die for another sin. But the word on begs to differ. Or you hear another man well, can't be responsible for another man's sin. We don't have to common sense or tell you that's a lie. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason we're sitting up over here in captivity. Yeah. We're paying off a sin debt that was left by who? Our forefather. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, all. Mm -hmm. And so, going back over to Yeshua, Isaiah 53. That he was taken from prison, 53 and 8, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off. Mm -hmm. Underline this. He was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. For the transgression of my people, how like that, was he stricken. How like the underlined stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence Neither was any deceit in his mouth. How like that? Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10. Yet it pleased you who to what? Bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul, underline this, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul what? An offering for sin. An offering for sin. Okay, verse 11. 
he shall see what? Of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify men. For he shall bear their iniquities. I like that. That's verse 11. It says, Therefore will I divide a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. Poured out his soul unto death. I like that. And he was numbered with the transgressors. I like that. And he bare the sin of many. I like that. And made intercession for the transgressors. I like that. So now, we see in this particular individual or this lamb taking on the role and responsibility for a collective. You have an individual who is suffering for a collective. Now, let's go back and look at some things. I just want to read that and point out some things. Now, we probably want to get back into that today. But let's go over to the book of Let's go to uh, Bereshit, or Genesis, the third chapter. Because the name of this lesson today is what? The Lamb. The Lamb. Genesis, the third chapter. And we're going to ask our um, daughter, Can, Chief Elder, if he would start reading that verse one. We're going to read this chapter in, in its entirety. Bereshit or Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For Elohim doth know that in that day you, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as Elohim's knowing good and evil. Okay, stop right there. So, where is all of this taking place? In the garden. In the garden of Eden or Adam. So, ask yourself, because a lot of times, you know, we read about Eden and we talk about Eden. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever questioned or asked why this particular location? Why was Adam or Adam why was he given this particular portion of land to reside in? Have you ever asked yourself, is there a connection between Adon or Eden and Jerusalem? Its strategic location and the strategic location of Jerusalem? Could there be a connection? Is there a connection? Yeah, I would say Place his name in Jerusalem, which right. is Eden. So you're saying Eden that Jerusalem is Eden? I didn't say that. You said I said, is there a connection? Is it possible? Right. Is oh, it possible? Eden? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't want to stop the assumption that Eden was in a different place. So if we look up, look at where. Uh, and let, me, and let me tell you why. Because it said that we were forbidden to go back into right. Eden. Right. Right. We're forbidden. Adam to was. Adam was. Right. So that's way before, you know, by the time you get down to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do, as we progress through this lesson, 
we will look at Eden and we'll look at Jerusalem or the New Jerusalem or the kingdom, its location, and see the connection between the two. Because Adam and Eve were not just exited out of the garden. They were exited out of the garden or Eden in a certain direction. And that gate was guarded with the Malachim and the flaming sword. So if you know which way they went out and in which direction Yerushalayim or Jerusalem sets, you begin to see the connection. And all of that's very, that's very important because we just can't deal with Isaiah 53. We have to look at the overall picture of this land. And the reason people can't understand what's going on in Isaiah 53 because they do not understand the land and what his purpose is and what he's fulfilling. Isaiah 53 is bigger than Israel. Mm -hmm. It has to go back to Adam or Eden. But let's continue reading on. That's all. Mm -hmm. Genesis 3 verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah Elohim, amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and hid, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you was naked? Has you eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded you that you should not eat, that you shouldn't not eat. And the man said, The woman whom you gave us to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And Yahuwah Elohim said unto the woman, What is this that you has done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And Yahuwah Elohim said unto the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. So what, what, what happened here? They got cursed, and they got to eat. Okay, they were cursed. So you see the responsibility that Yahuwah has given um, man, man passes the blame, or puts the blame on who? The woman. The woman, the woman puts the blame on who? The serpent. the serpent. So who's the guilty party? All of them. Okay. So we see the guilt of individuals, nobody taking ownership for what they've done, but they're passing the blame off to the next one. The husband to the woman, I mean the man to the woman, the woman to the servant, or the deceiver. Okay, now let's continue reading. Because we're going to see something else coming to play here. Something, or somebody who had didn't have anything to do with that whole situation. 